Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Xin Yang. I'm a technologist from the CTO office of Dell EMC, working on OpenStack contributions. I'm a co-reviewer in Cinder and Manila. Hi, I'm Jay Bryant, and I'm the Cinder subject matter expert from uh, IBM. And I'm Sean McGinnis from Dell EMC, and I'm the current PTL of the Cinder project. So we're going to go through, uh, give an update today of the work that was done in the Newton release. Uh, that's not working. Uh, I'm assuming, since you're here, everyone probably knows, but Cinder is the block storage service of OpenStack. It provides the uh, software API abstraction to be able to manage storage no matter what type of actual storage device you're using on the back end. So what happened to Newton? We're going to go over our backend drivers. Uh, every release we have different vendors adding support for storage devices. Talk about some of the features like async messaging, replication. Um, some of these are newer things. Some are kind of ongoing work that we've been probably talking about on every update for the last few summits. Uh, but just things that have been an ongoing effort to get functionality added in. Um, things like active, active, high availability. And then we're going to talk a little bit about our clients. Uh, we have OS Brick, our Cinder client, and um, extensions for being able to, to do um, more direct, non-Nova, more standalone uh, Cinder functionality with a client. So every release, we get more and more support for different backends. Um, they just keep coming in every release, uh, so we get, have quite an extensive list now. Um, in the last, in Newton, we were able to add uh, the, the list here. I won't go through all the names. Uh, some of these are just individual devices. Some are multiple different protocols, uh, and a few of these vendors are existing sender. Uh, uh, they've been involved in Cinder and just adding support for our new models. Uh, so with the addition of these, as of the Newton release, I believe this is updated as for our, for our, final, um, our final deadline of all the drivers. Uh, these should be all of the backends available in Newton. Uh, so hopefully if you're using, if you're standing up a new cloud or you have existing infrastructure that you're using, uh, you, you, your vendor of choice is on this list, or if you're looking to deploy a, a greenfield deployment, um, you can take a look here and, and see what your options are. Uh, I do call out uh, a few here that are, are um, uh, have an asterisk next to them. The, the LVM driver is the official reference driver of Cinder. Uh, so if you are a developer working for a storage company that's thinking about adding a Cinder driver, um, that is the, really the best place where we direct people to take a look and see how that driver needs to be implemented. Uh, depending on the type of storage you have, there's, there's some slight differences. So I, I've highlighted the NFS driver and the Ceph driver here um, just because of the, the type of that uh, protocol technology. Things are done slightly different, so if your storage is a little closer in line to those. You can take a look at those drivers as well as good references to see how to implement that functionality. So speaking of, dr of drivers, in Newton we, we tried to uh, do a little work to make sure that uh, not only are the drivers consistent and um, have third-party CI so that we have some guarantee of, of, of at least some basic reliability functionality. Uh, we, we added a additional interface checks for all of our drivers to make sure that um, uh, every once in a while we, we ran across a driver where we added the driver but didn't find out till later that some piece of it was missing. Um, so we have a little more uh, kind of compliance checking for those drivers just to make sure make sure it's automated, make sure that nothing can get in without us noticing. Um, so it's not on, it's not up to us or to someone doing the review to notice uh, that we have that as part of the checks that happen when that code is submitted and make sure that we find out right away if there's something missing. 
We also kind of changed our policy around uh, drivers. Uh, to give a little background, for the last several releases, we've required that in order to have a driver in the cinder tree, that vendor or that whoever's supporting that driver needs to have third-party CI running. And what that means is anytime any patch is submitted to, against Cinder, whether it's touching that driver code or something completely unrelated, that needs to kick off a, a set of tests run by that vendor against the actual storage device and make sure that everything passes. And we do event, you know, once in a while catch cases where something that seems completely unrelated makes a change that ends up breaking a driver. So third-party CI is a way to make sure that we catch that right away and don't let that in. Um, so with the policy of requiring that, what we had done in the past is if a vendor is unable or unwilling to run third-party CI anymore, we used to remove them from the cinder tree uh, pretty much immediately. And there's a set of tags at each project in OpenStack uh, says or states or declares that they follow and, and one of those takes is follows deprecation. Uh, and, and the deprecation policy for OpenStack is that any functionality that exists in a project needs to be marked as deprecated for one release before it can be actually removed in the next release. So, uh, you know, the, these aren't necessarily a feature of Cinder, but, you know, drivers are a really core piece of the Cinder service. Um, so just removing a driver immediately for not being able to follow the CI policy actually wasn't following the intent of that tag saying that we follow our deprecation policy. We would just take it out of there. Um, and, you know, if you, if you were an end user and running a cloud on one of these drivers and you weren't aware of this and you ran you know, upgrade of the packages for the distro, um, you know, you could be in a bad spot where suddenly your driver's no longer there. So what we did to address that, we, you know, we, we don't want to back off on our requirement of, for running third-party CI. Um, so we, we still need some way to enforce that well. So to make it a little easier transition and being able to follow that deprecation policy, we now just set a flag on that driver that, that marks it as an unsupported driver. And maybe it's supported by the vendor, um, but as far as the Cinder community goes, the open source community, um, to us, that's an unsupported driver. We have no way of knowing as a, a community whether that actually works or not because we don't have the vendor hardware. Uh, so we now mark it as unsupported. There's a new option that needs to go in cinder.conf that you need to explicitly set to enable being able to run an unsupported driver because we want to make it very clear um, so that it can't be easily overlooked and then you just run into that problem the next upgrade. So we, f we flag a driver as unsupported. You need to make that change in cinder.conf. And this does make it a little easier. If that vendor had some issues and we mark them as unsupported and now they're able to get back involved in the community and start running their CI, we can just change that flag. It makes it a lot easier rather than having a whole uh, new driver submission or having to revert all those changes. Uh, so it, it ends up being a little cleaner, uh, a little nicer on the end user definitely if, the, if you're using those back ends um, and, and makes, us, makes it so we still have a way of enforcing our policies. So next I will pass off to Jane. So uh, when a user performs a volume operation, such as uh, create a volume, um, and if the operation fails, um, the user will get a status, but uh, in order to find out why it fails, user will have to dig through the logs, which is uh, not convenient. So the purpose for this uh, user message feature is to provide the user with uh, detailed uh, failure messages uh, if the operation fails, and then present it in Horizon. In Newton, we have added the ability to list, show, uh, delete messages. Uh, the message list can be filtered by resource UUID, resource type, event ID, and so on. 
uh, and we also have our internal API that you can use to generate a message and save it to the database. And there's more work needs to be done to add more messages and uh, make them available in Horizon. So by default, the scheduler will always choose a backend with the highest weight. Uh, in Newton, now we have a new option called uh, the scheduler weight handler. By default, that this option is uh, set to ordered host weight handler. It will always choose the host on top with the, with the highest uh, weight. But if you change it to uh, stochastic host weight handler is going to make a random selection. And there's another change in the scheduler that uh, will affect drivers that supports uh, think theme provisioning support and uh, seek provision support in the same pool. Previously, um, if the driver uh, s supports both theme provision and uh, seek provision support, and uh, if uh, the user wants to create a seek line, the scheduler will use the logic for theme provisioning to evaluate, uh, which could potentially lead to over provisioning. Uh, so this fix is to add a check in the scheduler to, uh, to check the volume extra steps. Uh, volume extra specs, if the provisioning type is set to thick, then the scheduler will use the uh, free capacity to, to see if there is uh, enough space to create a volume. So in Newton, we have not done any update uh, in replication API. Uh, just we just have a few more drivers that have added uh, the support. They are um, Caminario, NetApps, CDOT, and uh, Solify drivers. Uh, so we added a generic volume groups construct in Newton. So what, how is that different from the consistency groups con construct that is already in Cinder? Uh, consistency groups in Cinder currently only support consistent group snapshot. So when we are trying to extend that to support replication group, we found that there are limitations because uh, backends have different requirements. Some backend can support consistent group snapshot, while other backends, they want to be able to replicate a group of volumes while not maintaining the right order consistency. So we couldn't use the consistency group construct to support both. Uh, and also if a uh, application has multiple volumes, uh, it will be convenient if we can group them all together so that user can manage, manage them together. So that's the reason, that's the reason why we added uh, generic volume groups. Uh, and eventually consistency groups will be migrated to use the generic volume groups. Similar to volume types and extra specs, we added uh, uh, group types and group specs to describe a group. Only admin can create, delete, and modify a group type. Only admin can set key or unset a key for group specs and uh, view the details of the group specs. we now have the ability to create, delete, update, show, and list groups. In order to create a group, you will have to specify a group type. Um, and also, one group can support multiple volume types. So other than the group type, you also need to uh, specify the volume types that are supported uh, in this group when you create a group. If you want to um, add, add existing volumes to a group or uh, remove the uh, remove volumes from the group, then you use the group update command. To delete a group, if the group is not empty, you will have to specify the delete volumes flag, so that will delete the group as well as all the volumes in that group. If you just want to delete the group itself but keep the volumes around, then you will have to use the group update first to remove those volumes from the group, then you can use the group delete to delete the empty group. Uh, 
uh, we also added uh, um, APIs and uh, CLIs to create, delete, share, and list the group snapshots. So the group snapshot can either be a consistent group snapshot or they can be just a, a group of uh, snapshots that does not have consistency. So the driver uh, that supports consistency groups currently can add that support using group snapshots. Um, by using group types, you can differentiate between uh, different types of uh, group snapshots. We, we can also um, create a group from a source group or create a group from a group snapshot. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to migrate consistent groups to generic volume groups. Uh, so it's going to take a while for that transition to be completed uh, because this change involves some uh, data migrations. Uh, we'll need to migrate data from one table to another and eventually uh, drop in the old table. So in order to support uh, rolling upgrades, we will have to it's going to take at least, uh, I think, three releases for this to complete. Uh, we will provide migration scripts for that. So this is a work in progress, and we're hoping to get this done in Okada. Uh, we also have a plan to implement a replication group uh, based on generic volume groups. That's also a work in progress, but because Okada is a short, very short release cycle, so um, we're not expecting that to be done in Okada. In Cinder, you can manage volumes and uh, manage snapshots, but in order to run that command, you will have to uh, provide a um, identifier for the volume and snapshot. Um, now, to get that identifier, you will have to go to the back end to find out. So now we have this uh, uh, new API to list all the manageable volumes and all the manageable snapshots. So, um, and if you list them, then, then you can take a look and decide what are the volumes and snapshots you want to um, bring into under Cinder's control. In Newton, we deprecated the ability to uh, define the back backend uh, storage in the default section in cinder.conf. If you still use this option, then you'll get a warning. Uh, the, recommended the, the recommended way is to define them in the uh, backend specific section in the cine.conf. So we also added the ability to retype between encrypted volume types and uh, non-encrypted uh, volume types. Uh, and we also uh, have Castellan key manager interface now. Castellan is uh, uh, implemented by the Barbican team is a generic uh, key manager interface. Uh, right now, only the Barbican driver is the um, recommended, I, th I think, production-ready driver for, for Castellan. We also uh, added API to update backup, uh, backup's name and description. Um, and also now we can delete multiple volume metadata keys using one request. Uh, we added the e-tags in the API calls. So uh, this is a performance uh, enhancement. Uh, we also, uh, we, we can also query volume, query volumes filtered by uh, glance metadata key value pairs. Um, to use this option, you will have to use, uh, add glance metadata to query volume filter option in order to enable that. Uh, we have also uh, removed uh, XML API uh, that was already uh, deprecated back in Mitaka. Now I'll hand over to Jay. Thank you, Xing. Uh, okay, so the quota related changes, um, this is a little bit different than some of the other items. This was actually an item that was a uh, bug that came in when we added the ability to do um, hierarchical quotas, uh, nested quotas in uh, projects. So previously, if you were using non-nested quotas, if a uh, admin wanted to come in and, and modify those quotas uh, for the projects, they'd be able to do that. But when we went to the nested model, 
we had problems um, that if the admin was not a member of the project, they were no longer able to modify quotas um, for nested projects. So uh, uh, fixed up the code to, to check if it's an admin user and then allow them to uh, modify quotas for all the projects on that, that system as had previously functioned. So not so much a new function, but uh, getting nested quotas working more the way that uh, quotas had previously worked. And that's the wrong button. We'll just do this. There we go. Um, <laughs> technical difficulties. Um, so the, the, the rest of the things I'm going to talk about here um, are, are items that are our continued work in progress items uh, that we've been working on over multiple releases, give you a little bit of an update on how that's going. Um, been doing a lot of work with the active active HA uh, code and trying to get the, the functionality of the, the volume process set up so that we're able to have um, you know multiple volume backends running that you can fail over um, from a control node perspective so that uh, you know if you've got redundancy on your backend storage obviously that's good but we also need control plane redundancy as we're moving into more enterprise type setups. Um, so there's the addition of a new cluster entity where you can indicate which volume backend, which volume processes um, are clustered together as a, a failover unit um, for high availability. Um, and then adding the commands that go with that and able to, uh, to be able to see, you know, what is the current state um, of those those clustered entities, you know, what 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 option what backends are, are clustered together. Um, and and that sort of thing, so that you can manage your high available, highly available environment. Um, there, we found in the process. Gorka has been doing great work on this. Um, lots of API race conditions, um, as far as you know, in in consistency groups and when doing migration or retyping and extending volumes. Uh, so there, were, you know, uh, analysis and changes that went in to help avoid having race conditions in that code. Um, had to add in the ability to do, you know, remote locks between between the two clusters. So with two's locks, added that. Um, and then start and stop coordination of the volume service. And uh, Gorka's got a great um, uh, blog post out there that we have linked on, on how you can test uh, active active and give it a try. And if you find issues, uh, please let us know so that we can continue to improve and develop that. Uh, Multi-attach. We actually were just talking about this this morning. Um, if you're a fan of Cinder and Nova, you know this is something we've been working on for a long time. Um, and so we're, we're been working on improving the APIs to be ready on the Cinder side so that uh, we can, can attach um, one volume to, to multiple instances. Um, have them access the same volume. On the Cinder side, we've got a lot of the plumbing there to do it. We're cleaning up the plumbing so that uh, the that it's easier to follow the code path and there's less likely to be issues. The challenges on the Nova side, um, depending on what kind of volume connector you have, we have to figure out, okay, some of them there is for each instance that you attach the volume you have a new connection from Nova's standpoint. So when you're done with that connection, you disconnect it, and you know you're done with it, and you don't have to worry about it. But um, some of the, the backends support shared connections. So you have, if you have it attached twice, you only see one connection on the host, but really it's being used by multiple instances. And then it gets complicated from a Nova standpoint to know whether when we disconnect, well, is that the last person using it or not? Um, so we're working around, um, we, we have a number of proposals, we're working with the Nova team to try to find a solution there that will, will work and allow us to do um, multi-attach. So all of these patches are out there under review, we're going to continue talking about them here at this summit and uh, hopefully hopefully um, that's something that will we'll go in here in, in Okada. Rolling upgrades. Um, so again, this kind of goes along with all the work to be highly available and uh, working well in an enterprise environment. Um, need to deal with the fact that if you want to keep your 
Cinder environment up and running while you're upgrading to the next release. Uh, you need to then insulate the, the volume process and, and all of Cinder from changes that are happening to the database in the back end as the upgrade is happening. Um, so there's been a, a, a slow process of moving all of our, our different um, bits of code, all the, d the different objects to a versioned object. Um, and what that lets us do is take data uh, and, and package it up with the functions that that data is used by, and then that insulates it from schema changes on the back-end database. Um, so these are the, the portions of code there we got updated, um, and we'll continue to work through that so that we can get to a, a full support of rolling upgrades. Um, added the new version 3.0 of the RPC API, um, but it's still backwards compatible with, with the 2.x versions. Um, so this, we're, we're really pretty close to having it all done, um, but like with the active, active HA setup, um, there's a lot of testing that needs to be done to make sure that it's really, really working and that we're not gonna push anything out that, that could lead to uh, issues in the future. Uh, Brick, so we continue, for those of you that aren't familiar with Brick, uh, this has been an ongoing project to create a library uh, that instead of having attached code in Nova and Cinder, we've created the OS Brick project, which is a library that then can be accessed by both Nova and Cinder, and we only have to change attached code in one location. So, um, you know, over the last couple of releases, we've been moving to that environment, and uh, now in this release, we added more connectors, um, so greater support. Uh, GPFS now has its own connector, so each of these connectors um, have support in, in Brick for any of their special options that they need uh, when they, they connect up to a host. And so these were added um, so that they could, could support their individual functionality in this uh, release. And then also we used uh, moved to using PrivSep for privileged operations. This was to catch up with Nova um, and, and use the same uh, security solution there um, for this code, and um, that's something to be aware of. Uh, if you were running on master at the time as the switch happened, you could see some unexpected changes depending on your environment. Uh, most people, this should just be smooth and not notice the difference, but it's something to be aware of if, if after your upgrade you see uh, a different functionality in your uh, commands that run as root. And uh, then in the Python Cinder client, uh, just for your awareness, we've really kind of talked about most of this before. Um, it was just the addition of the commands um, to support doing the, the cluster uh, commands for HA active active support, the commands for uh, accessing the message, uh, user messages for async jobs, and um, make you aware that the Cinder endpoints command has been deprecated. Uh, so that, that keystone related command is uh, no longer is going to be, be removed here. And then the uh, new commands for group types, group and group snapshots. So uh, with you with the latest Cinder client, uh, we got all that rolled up and pushed out. And finally, um, Sean mentioned this a little bit earlier, the work we've been doing with the uh, standalone Python uh, brick Cinder client the ability to uh, use Cinder from, from an ironic node, not to have to have uh, Nova there in the mix, added the ability to actually do a volume attach and detach there. So uh, getting closer to, to sharing functionality for Cinder on uh, ironic nodes. And at this point, we'll hand it back over to Sean to talk more about what's coming in Okada. Thanks. So, as you've probably heard, at least hopefully at this summit, uh, the, the schedule is changing slightly for releases. You know, we've had the six-month cadence uh, forever, and uh, as we try to restructure how some of our design activities happen, uh, that means that the Okada cycle uh, really only goes until the end of February. Uh, and now counting holidays, things like that, we, we really don't have a lot of time in the Okada cycle. Because of that, I decided for this release, uh, we had enough 
kind of long-term feature implementation activities going on. Um, you know, we have a few bugs outstanding there. Uh, so since it really wouldn't have been enough time to, to really jump on a, a big new feature, we're trying to make the Okada release for Cinder be mostly about bug fix and stability, uh, going through what issues we have out there, how can we fix them, how can we make things better. Uh, so for Okada, there really won't be too much new. Uh, it, it'll mostly be uh, you know, just a, a better product, better, more solid service uh, at the end of Okada. That doesn't mean that we're not looking at, uh, at either both finishing the features that we've already been working on, things like active, active, high availability. This has been a long-term process to try to get all of the, those changes in place. We hope to finish that in Okada. Uh, rolling upgrades, e rolling upgrades are, are pretty much complete. Uh, the only reason we still have any hesitancy to, to say, yeah, this rolling upgrades are good um, just we want to improve our automated testing around that, make sure that we have everything covered, uh, but everything's in place. And uh, as we mentioned before, the multi-attach activity with Nova changing, um, you know, that, that whole effort, just how it uh, really highlighted some of the issues we had interacting between Nova and Cinder. Uh, we're really hoping that we can do something for that in Okada. Um, you know, may maybe if we might end up being one of those that we talk about again at the next summit, but we want to iron out how that interaction works and really come up with a, a solid API, solid plan for what's going to work well between Nova and Cinder so that we can actually implement this multi-attach support uh, with a, a sane API. So, um, well, Here's a related links, but but uh, on the topic of upcoming things beyond Okada, I, I just wanted to say we, we are discussing that. We are seeing uh, what other functionality we need to start thinking about for the Pike release and beyond that. Uh, we have some ideas as a Cinder team, but definitely this is a great time, great opportunity if, if there's some functionality in Cinder missing that you need for to, to meet your use case, uh, please talk to the team, uh, go on IRC, send to the mailing list, uh, track me down. Uh, we'd love to get any feedback from operators, deployers, you know, what kind of issues are you running into with Cinder? What do you need in that service to be able to, to give a, a good solid storage API for your cloud? So with that, I'll ask Jing and Jay to come back up on stage and uh, we'll open it up for any Q&A. We got it all covered. <laughs> More questions? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, that's good for me. Good. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so the question was, if we have a, a driver with uh, uh, that doesn't currently have consistency group support, what should that driver, vendor, plan to do? And I'll let Ching answer that. Uh, yeah, I should just use the, the new CLI, the new APIs, actually. The, there is a driver interface for that. Just implement the new driver interface. Yeah. So you can, you, can, you know, uh, in your driver, you can uh, use different uh, group types, where you can say, um, you can report uh, um, the consistent group snapshot equal to true, and you can, uh, you can use that to add the support. So you're in your driver, you can just uh, um, you call your special API that create a consistency group snapshot. And you can actually support both. So um, you can, depending on the type, it's either consistent or you know the G 
just a group of volumes and a group of snapshots that are not considered. You can support both, depending on the type. So outside, actually, I, I don't know if we have new vendors or vendors in the room that are um, considering adding drivers, but you know, given how quickly the list is growing, I bet you there's a decent chance of it. Um, so we, we still have the you know something that hasn't changed uh, here in Newton is you know we have the list of of expected functionality that every driver has to implement to be included in Cinder. We have not added additional function to that since, gosh probably ice house now um, you know but but one of the questions I get internally from all my IV, IBM driver people is what what do we need to add um, and and really you know not every back end supports consistency groups or the other functionality um, and it, it's really up to the vendors as to when these new functions are made available in cinder uh, when they want to implement it and and that's you know we've got a, a matrix out right now if you search for it that shows at least how we understand the current state of drivers and what functions they support, but that's definitely an area that we can continue to uh, improve on. But I would I would ask back to you, um, you know, if you add consistency groups for your drivers, make sure that that's that's documented and indicated so that we know what each driver uh, is supporting. Other questions? That's a good question. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks very much.